Job chapters 4 and 5, through the Bible. Part 4. I would seek unto God, and unto God would I commit my cause, which doeth great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number, who giveth rain upon the earth, and sendeth waters upon the fields, to set up on high those that be low, that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. He disappointeth the devices of the crafty, so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the froward is carried headlong. They meet with darkness in the daytime, and grope in the noonday as in the night. But he saveth the poor from the sword, from their mouth, and from the hand of the mighty. So the poor hath hope, and iniquity stoppeth her mouth. Job 5, verses 8 to 16. What he is saying here, and he is saying it really in a beautiful way, is that God is faithful and God is good, and God is just. While this is true, it doesn't reach the root of the problem of this man Job. Eliphaz actually is not even talking to Job. Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. Therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Job 5.17 I have heard this verse quoted again and again. Isn't it true? Of course, it is true, but Eliphaz was using it as a personal dig against Job. Chastening is not always the reason that God's people suffer, as we have seen. Sometimes one can use this verse as a little dagger to put into the heart of a friend. It is a nice way of saying, you are having trouble because you've done wrong and God is correcting you. Well, that could be, but it may not be. Who are you to make such a judgment? Do you have a telephone into heaven? Has the Lord revealed some secret to you? There are people who like to speak ex cathedra, and they are not even the Pope. Some people think they have the last word on everything. Listen, friend. You cannot always speak to the problem of someone else, and someone else cannot always speak to your problem either. Although the statement of Eliphaz is true, it does not apply to Job. For he maketh sore, and bindeth up. He woundeth, and his hands make whole. Job 5.18 What a wonderful picture of God that is! He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. Job 5.19 You will notice this use of seven again in Proverbs 6 verse 16 and, in fact, quite often throughout the Bible. It is not just a poetic expression. It means seven, not the number of perfection, the number of completeness. For instance, the seventh day was the completion of one week. Seven is the number of completeness here, as he gives the total spectrum of the trouble of man. In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. Job 5 20 and 21. God will deliver you in these seven troubles. 1. In famine he shall redeem thee from death. 2. In war from the power of the sword. 3. From the scourge of the tongue. During the war in Vietnam, we were given a body count in the daily news. I wonder what the body count from gossip would be in this day. The tongue has probably killed more people than war has. We need to pray that God will deliver us from the evil tongue. A woman in a church I served had a very evil tongue. I remember praying, Oh God, don't let her hit me with that tongue. I found out that she did use her tongue against me. She was mean, but God protected me from being hurt by her. 4. God will deliver from the fear of destruction when it cometh, that is the typhoon, the tornado, the storm. When I was a boy it seemed like I spent half my life in a storm cellar in West Texas. God did deliver us, but he expected us to go to the storm cellars. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. Job 5.22 5. Five, he delivers from famine. Have you ever stopped to think that generally wherever the gospel has gone, 
whether or not it has been widely accepted, you find one of the prosperous areas of the world? These nations are the haves. I do not think that is an accident. I have often thought that with the food we send to have not countries should be prizes like we get in boxes of Cracker Jacks. And the prize should be the word of God. Blessing attends the reading of the word. 6. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace and thou shalt visit thy habitation, and shalt not sin. Thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great, and thine offspring as the grass of the earth. Thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age, like as a shock of corn cometh in in his season. Job 5.23-26 7. The last trouble is death. Eliphaz speaks of death, not as an awful hideous monster, but is something welcome. There is a leveling out in death. Lo this, we have searched it, so it is. Hear it, and know thou it for thy good. Job 5.27 This concludes the first discourse of Eliphaz. It has not met the need of Job. It hasn't touched him at all. As a matter of fact, Job is dismayed. He is alarmed, and he cries out for pity. He cries out for mercy and for help because Eliphaz was of no help to him at all.